The first step to getting started with even G is, well, getting even G. And the cool thing about even G is there are a bunch of different ways that you can download it and install it. Now, the idea here is that even G is a virtual machine. It runs on top of a hypervisor. That way it's separated from your desktop computer and you can access it via that way. Now we can run EVNG in a bunch of different hypervisor or virtualization tools, primarily run by VMware. So in this video, what we're gonna do is explore how you can get EVNG up and running within VMware's workstation tool. Let's get going with that. Now, if you're brand new to virtualization and importing VMs and all of this stuff, don't worry, we got you covered. The tool that you wanna get going with on your local desktop, because you're trying to run EVNG from your local computer, you want to use this tool right here on the screen, VMware Workstation Player. This is a free version that VMware offers so that you can run virtual machines on your local computer. So let's check it out. I'll click into VMware Workstation Player here, and now I know, I know, the first thing you see right here is buy a workstation player today. And you're thinking, wait, didn't he just say it was free? Look, if you scroll all the way down, all the way down, look right there, licensing, free for personal use. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're using this for personal use. Keep that in mind that this is for personal use. So I'm going to click the download now button here. And we're going to download VMware Workstation player version 16. We'll say go to downloads and I'm downloading this on a 64-bit Windows operating system. So I'm going to click the download button here and we're going to open it and run it. All right, it does say this installer does require you to restart your system to finish installing this thing in order to run the installer. Apparently I had an update that I need to run. So I'm going to restart my computer. I'm going to click yes to this and restart my computer real quick. When we come back, it'll run the VMware installer and then we'll have workstation up and running. So I'll click yes. And after a quick restart, we are trying it again. So let's get this exe open up here. And now we're looking a lot better. <laughs> let's do next. Accept the license agreement. Next. All right, let's see what we got here. Enhanced keyboard driver. I don't think I need to worry about this. Uh, I do want to add this VMware Workstation console into the path. So we'll click next. And notice this is going to be the default installation path if you need to change that too. Check for product updates, customer improvement. You know, I'm going to exit out of that one. We'll click next. I uh, don't need a shortcut on my desktop. And I like the start menu programs folder. So we'll click next and install. Now, while this is installing, let's say some things here. This is going to be creating a virtualization platform on this computer. So it does alter some of the ways that this computer actually works and behaves, including changes some of the network adapters themselves. So keep that in mind. If things look or feel a little funny about your desktop the next time, it could be because VMware Workstation changed some things like the network settings. But for the most part, this won't be something that you need to worry about or even know about. You just should know that this is going on behind the scenes as it's setting your computer up for virtual now that we actually have Workstation 16 installed and ready to rock and roll, let's move on to getting EVNG up and running on this computer. And we're going to move on to downloading the EVNG download. So, so all I have to do really is just search for EVNG and we see EVNG.net comes up. There's also a link that can take me straight to the download section. I'll click download here. And what are we looking for? How do we want to download this thing? Well, there's a couple different formats that you can download these files in. Right here, you can see we have the OVF files. And that's really what we're talking about when we talk about importing a virtual machine into VMware Workstation or ESXi, which we're going to talk about in the next videos. The ISO is when we need to customize or do a custom install of EVNG. And since we're trying to just import a virtual machine into VMware Workstation, the OVF is definitely going to be the simplest way to get this done. So I'm going to use the Google mirror right here just to get this going for me. I'll click download anyway. This little warning says that the file is too large for Google to scan for viruses because it is 5.1 gigs. I'll save this to my downloads folder real quick. And while that's downloading, I want to point out a couple things real quick. The first section you see here on the screen is for EVNG Professional. The second section here is the free version of EVNG, the Community Edition. Now, there are some big differences between the two. For the most part, the Community Edition will let you run your images and your network simulation that you want to do. EVNG Professional comes with a bunch of bonus features that I really can't recommend enough. The things that I use daily are the Docker containers. 
These Docker containers include things like an actual Linux-based GUI server that can run things like a web server or certificate services. Basically anything that you can do on a Linux machine you can do with this lightweight little container that comes baked into EvenG Pro. But also that's been containerized in EvenG Pro is Firefox. So you can run a lightweight web browser or most importantly Wireshark. That way when you spin up images of network devices like switches or routers you can simply right click on the device and tell it run a wireshark capture on the specific interface and that little docker container pops up already one running your wireshark capture this feature alone has been worth it to me to go with even g professional especially as i dug into my professional and expert level certifications where those wireshark captures play a big deal all right i see that i've got my EVNG pro zip file is now done downloading what i'm going to do is i'm going to open it in the folder and i'm going to extract this file i'm okay extracting it right here for the moment so we'll let it get done running the extraction this zip file contains all of the components that you need in order to import a virtual machine you may be seeing this vmdk right there that's the virtual machine hard drive disk that the thing actually runs off of it may be worth it to you to extract this to a dedicated folder, something like EVNG on your C drive or D drive or so on. Now let's explore this real quick and you can see there's not a whole lot of stuff going on in here. The OVF is the file that contains all of the information about the virtual machine and the VMDK is the file that actually holds the hard drive itself. And this is everything we need to get started with EVNG. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to click start and I'm going to launch my VMware Workstation 16 player. And the first time it pops up, it says use VMware Workstation 16 player for free for non-commercial use, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Thank you for using VMware Workstation player. And it looks like it may have frozen up on me. Let's try and relaunch it again. Okay, this time I actually get a finish button. So let's click finish. And now I've got VMware Workstation player already up and running. Now it's got some all this, you know, information about learning how to do new stuff with virtual machines and VMware work. I'm just going to say, you know, remind me later for this one because that's not exactly what I'm trying to do right now. What I'm trying to do is import an existing virtual machine. So I'm going to click the open a virtual machine right here. Then in my download section, I see I've got my folder that I extracted. We'll jump into it and there's the OVF file that it wants to import. So I'll click open. It says, do you want to give this a name? I'll say, you know, let's call it EVNG Pro. And I definitely want to move the storage path. I don't want this to be in my OneDrive folder because next thing I know, it's going to be trying to sync this entire virtual machine to my OneDrive folder. That's no good. Let's click Browse. And on my C drive, I'll create a new folder and call it EVE-VM for virtual machine. I'll click on EVM and click OK. Now I see that it's set to move that virtual machine into that folder. I'll click Import. And after just a moment, we see that I now have Eve Pro is listed in my virtual machines. Right here, you can see that its state by default is powered off, interestingly enough. EVNG Pro runs on Ubuntu 16.04. Now by default, it gives it eight gigs of RAM. And if you're going to be trying to run larger topologies and larger virtual machines, things like the SD-WAN topologies or the CSR-1000Vs, 8 gigs of RAM might not cut it. So you may want to do edit virtual machine settings right here at the bottom. And this is where you can adjust it. You can allocate virtual processors to it, like four processors, as well as more RAM to it. Also worth pointing out, if 50 gigs of hard drive space is not enough, the easiest way to expand your EVNG environment is simply to add a new hard drive. You can click the Add button, choose a hard disk, leave it set to SCSI, create a new virtual hard disk, and then set the space right here to whatever you'd like to do. Now, I don't need to do this. I'm going to click Cancel. I'm going to cancel out of all of these things, but I just wanted to point this out that you can increase your RAM usage your processor usage, and your storage by adding a new hard disk right here. Do keep in mind the limits of your own server or your own desktop that you're running this on. So with all that said, it's time to turn on my virtual machine. I'm going to click play virtual machine. I'll say remind me later to these VMware tool installations. And as you can see, EVNG is coming to life right now. As you can see, the first thing that pops up is I see a IP address that I can access Eve on, and it also tells me the default root password is Eve. So if I need to access my console of this virtual machine, I can type in the login of root, 
and the password of Eve. And there we go. It's, t it's brought me in, and now it wants me to type in a root password. I'll type in a password and confirm the password. We'll leave the host name to EVNG. I don't need to worry about the domain name. DHCP settings are fine for me. I don't need to worry about NTP, but if you want to, you can set an NTP server here. The VM can connect with a direct connection, and now it reboots with the new settings that we've applied. One more time, I can type in root, but now I should set my new password again. And there we go. I'm now officially on the console of EVNG. The moment of truth, though, is can I get to this IP address and access EVNG from the front end? I'll bring up my web browser one more time. We'll go to https colon slash slash 10 10 21. What was that IP one more time? 149. Oh, that's a good sign. Here it says my connection isn't private because we've got a self-signed certificate. That's okay. When I click the advanced button and then continue, there we go. I see that I now have a login session. I can type in the username of admin and the password of Eve, E-V-E. -E. I'll actually hit the little show here and click sign in. And there we go. I'm officially signed in to my EVNG Pro instance, and we're ready to get up and running creating labs. So that's been how to get EVNG stood up on your machine from scratch, installing VMware Workstation Player, and then installing the EVNG OVF file, the template that we can get up and running. We even talked about how to customize this machine, and now you're ready to rock and roll with EVNG, moving on to the next steps like installing client tools and adding images to EVNG. All right, thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.